Birds chirping, waves crashing, rain falling, jungle animals harmonizing. These sounds are Earth's lifeline, its pulse. This is the rich diversity behind each and every heartbeat. But soon, it may flatline. Nature's health is threatened by forest fires spreading like the plague, pollution infiltrating our ecosystems like cancer, rising sea levels like elevated blood pressure. Our planet is sick. Nature's voice reduced to a deafening silence. Now I bet some of you are feeling a little bit uncomfortable. I'm sure some of you even thought I probably forgot my lines. And I mean, you're not completely wrong. But the truth is, feeling some discomfort is actually needed to inspire change. And let me just say, there's no greater discomfort in life than trying to watch me draw. I mean, me with crayons? Let's just call it abstract art. Although I know nothing about art, a particular social experiment that uses art illustrates an important environmental message that really struck a chord with me. This was called Doorway to Green, and it was a campaign by J. Walter Thompson for Tata Pravesh. Here, there were two groups of people, adults and children. The adults were asked to draw a picture with a whole box of colorful crayons. They were told that there was another group coming in after them and that they should use their colors wisely. The adults produced pictures with vivid colors. The children then came in and could only use the remaining colors to draw their pictures. The two groups were then compared and the adults felt a sense of guilt. The children's drawings looked grim since they only had the dull crayon colors that were left behind by the adults. The experiment highlighted our collective responsibility towards preserving our resources and the environment for future generations. Recently, Yale's program on climate change surveyed Americans and the results were surprising. More than 70% of the people know that global warming is happening. 62% were worried about it. However, only 43% of people thought that it would affect them personally. And the percentages keep decreasing. Now, why do we see such results? Part of this might be because many people do not understand the complicated phrases and language used by scientists and climate advocates. For example, we hear terms like carbon sequestration, urban sprawl, bioremediation, etc. Instead, simpler phrases often drive home the point more effectively to the general public. Rather than using fancy terms like carbon sequestration, we can use simple language like carbon sink. Both convey the same message of storing carbon and removing it from the atmosphere. But providing the visual of a carbon sink helps us better imagine the carbon being pulled and drained into a basin. We should also actively make an effort to provide comparisons and analogies when conveying scientific findings. How about stating the alarming fact that in the near future, the Maldives may only survive in history textbooks because it will be completely submerged due to rising sea levels. Soon snorkeling might become our main mode of transport. So we have established that people don't really resonate with bare statistics. We need to take a more creative approach. In the current environmental movement, we've tried time and time again to use statistics to convey a sense of urgency, that something has to be done right now. But it doesn't seem to be getting through to everyone. So how about we put a creative spin to this? We've all heard that a picture is worth a thousand words. <laughs> the proverb exaggerates to make a point. A research study by Alan Blackwell concluded that a picture is worth 84 words. However, according to a forester's research, a video is worth 
million words. Humans are visual beings. Videos can connect and appeal to our different senses and keep viewers engaged. Videos on environmental topics such as implementing sustainable lifestyles can resonate better with people more than any piece of text. In other words, we can make movies that matter so that people are inspired to take action and join activism programs. With the power of film, we can accelerate the spread of our environmental messages and actions at the speed of sight. Currently, we are in the Cenozoic Era's Quaternary Periods Holocene Epoch. I know, it's a mouthful. As we leave the Anthropocene time period, named for the significant environmental impact that humans have had, we must enter into the Symbiocene a time where we nurture nature rather than compete with it. We must envision an era conducive to interdependence and reach that Goldilocks zone of Holocene healing. The key to achieving this may lie in cartography and its potential applications for preserving our environment. Being an avid geographer myself, I've looked into map making as a new outlet whether it is facilitating the preservation of biodiversity or predicting rising rates of urbanization, maps allow us to explore and expose the environmental problems that demand a solution. By mapping the existing infrastructure in secluded places around the world, we can gain a better understanding of the rate of global development and its environmental impacts. Here's an example where I've traced satellite imagery onto maps and added details such as buildings and roads. And in this one, I have mapped coastlines of biodiversity hotspots that would be threatened by rising sea levels. This effort to bridge the gap on missing maps can serve as a vital tool for disaster response as well. We live in a world of cause and effect relationship. Something happens and we respond. Well, I mean, actually there's some procrastination in the middle and then we respond. But nonetheless, we have a clear history of this. Cities were choking in smog and pollution. Clean Air Act was born. Holes in the ozone layer were getting larger and this gave birth to the Montreal Protocol. But what if instead of suffering first and then fixing our problem, we get ahead of the game by proactively enacting legislation as a preventative measure. For example, it has been discovered that sunscreen contains oxybenzone, which is meant to absorb UV light. But it also contributes to coral bleaching and damages the coral DNA. We have not yet lost all of our rich coral reefs, but at this rate, we certainly will. In fact, according to Forbes, Scientists predict that over 70% of all our coral reefs will disappear in the next 20 years. Instead of waiting for our coral reefs to bleach, legislation banning oxybenzone and other harmful toxins in sunscreen would help forestall this issue altogether. But the best way to proactively prevent these issues is to educate and nurture the next generation of climate leaders by implementing more legislation to increase the standard of environmental education for youth. We can ensure that future generations can meaningfully contribute to the climate conversation. However, looking beyond government regulation, it's our responsibility to change our personal behavior. We must look at environmental consequences that might not be directly apparent to us. The COVID-19 pandemic has been generally perceived as good for the environment with the restoration of habitats for wildlife, uh, reduced pollution and greenhouse gas emissions. But we need to look deeper. Internet usage shot up by more than 40% worldwide. Imagine the movies that are streamed online, millions of Zoomers attending meetings, schools online, and yes, people even doing online workouts. And in the absence of indoor dining, the amount of takeout food orders has increased drastically, and this goes hand in hand 
with the increase in single-use plastics. We should try to inform ourselves and be critical of our everyday lifestyles. People have taken it upon themselves to reassess their activities and approach them from more sustainable angles. Art can be made sustainable, scalable, and sensible without being sacrificial. Take a look at this picture. Now, wouldn't you want this piece of art in your living room? I would. Take a closer look. This art of the human eye is made from plastic bottle caps. It serves as a constant reminder to keep an eye on sustainability. How about this upcycled art? This is made by using recycled credit cards. And how unique is this accordion style magazine clock made from recycled paper? The transformation begins with the mindset. Stanford Earth professor John Payne has extensively researched Earth's five previous mass extinctions. And although he acknowledges the important roles of meteor impacts, volcanic eruptions, and ice ages, he argues that the underlying factor behind all of these mass extinctions was indeed environmental change. I had earlier talked about Holocene healing. The sixth mass extinction is in fact the Holocene extinction, driven by our human carelessness. And by National Geographic's estimates, this could occur in less than 500 years if we don't take action now. We should not drop the ball, not on our watch. Let me leave you with this scene. Imagine, no, re-imagine Earth in its place of ideal perfection, a utopia, one where there are bountiful natural resources for future generations, a rich tapestry of flora and fauna for all the inhabitants, not just humankind, a kaleidoscope of diversity. You hear that? Now that is the strong heartbeat of our reviving Earth. Thank you.